Get started. My name is Josh Antis. I am the Community Relations Manager for uh, Cal Coast Credit Union. Uh, welcome to our webinar today on emotional spending and reducing expenses. Uh, just a few things I'd like to mention before we get started. Everyone will be placed on mute for the duration of today's presentation. However, if you do have any questions, please feel free to ask those in either the chat box or the question and answer box. And we will definitely address those for you either as we go or towards the end of the presentation. Uh, if you have any questions at all in regards to today's material or to or in regards to uh, anything that's related to the credit union uh, products and services that we offer, uh, you know, any questions in general, just uh, feel free to ask and we will answer those for you. Uh, we also have uh, a survey that will uh, appear at the end of today's presentation. If you can take the time to fill that out, we greatly appreciate it. it helps us to improve as we go. Uh, you will also have an opportunity to fill that out uh, when you receive the follow up email in about a day or so. So if you don't have time to do it today, don't worry, you can always do that uh, later on. And uh, I also wanna mention that today's presentation is being recorded and we will uh, post it on our YouTube channel in the coming days so that you can take a look at it again if you missed any info or wanna go back and check anything that uh, we talked about. So don't worry about taking uh, vigorous notes. You can always go back and take a look anytime. Okay, so it's a new year. Uh, we have you know, new budgets, uh, new new expenses to worry about. And uh, I think we all know that emotions definitely play into how we spend our money and how we uh, how well we stick to our budget, right? So uh, we wanted to go ahead and discuss something that uh, I don't think we've ever, ever really touched on before. We're, we're excited to talk about this topic a little bit. And uh, here with us today, we have Jevin Boyer. He's one of our financial fitness coaches, certified, excuse me, financial fitness coaches here at Cal Coast. And uh, so Jevin's going to go ahead and talk to us about emotional spending and what we can do to curb it uh, or to recognize it, curb it, and then uh, some other uh, best practices for reducing expenses. So Jevin, go ahead and take it away. Well, thank you, Josh, and good afternoon, everyone. With uh, Thank you for joining our webinar. It's our first webinar from our financial wellness team for 2022. And we're excited to bring this new series to you. We really wanted to address some of the most um, prevalent things that are on our members' minds. And a couple things uh, that came up, first of all, was emotional spending and reducing expenses. So let's go ahead and jump right into that. And Josh, can you see my presentation screen? I sure can. Wonderful. We'll go ahead and jump, get started. And so let's talk about this topic of emotional spending. So what is emotional spending? And what this is, it's a behavior of spending money. And what we need to understand, it's, it's just a reaction to positive or negative emotions. And we're gonna do a little thing. I wanna see, uh, we're gonna get a little audience participation here. And if you can answer this question, go ahead and fill it in the chat. So if I were to say to you, you just won the Super Bowl, what are you gonna do next? Go ahead and fill in the chat. What are you gonna do next? Go to Disneyland, go to Disneyland, perfect. We all know that answer. It's been so ingrained in us that once you, it, it's this beautiful advertisement that says, you know, you've reached this peak, what do you wanna to do to celebrate? Well, we're gonna go do something expensive. We're going to, I, I see a couple of these parties, sell the tickets, we're gonna go do something expensive. And that's the exact um, process of this emotional spending. And it works the same way uh, if something negative happens. Maybe you miss your child's soccer game and you feel guilty and you, you know, you want to go buy the, uh, the toy or you miss an event and you want to go buy that person, you know, an extra expensive gift for missing the event. So it's used to fill this emotional need. And what's important for us to remember, it's not, emotional spending is a way of coping with a situation. It's not a representation of your character at all. But how do we identify these emotional spending um, habits and patterns? Well, the first thing you might want to ask yourself is, are conversations around money making you anxious? Do you find yourself wanting to change the topic? If so, that could be, you know, light bulb. That could be, you know, maybe it's something I need to be a little more aware of, or maybe trying to hide transactions. I know it's a, a tough subject to deal with, but I mean, it's, it's January. Nobody wants to see their, their credit card statement right now. But right now, the beginning of the year gives us a powerful opportunity to look into our statements and really get this awareness of how we've spent this holiday season. And if 
allows us to be more prepared both emotionally and financially for the next year. A couple of other things, maybe uh, be aware of or more packages or services being delivered to the home, or maybe we're eating out more than normal. Uh, that could be, uh, again, a couple of red flags to help us give us the awareness of emotional spending. So what causes us to spend? Uh, there's several things, but these four stick out in my mind. Um, habits are number one. I mean, we all have our daily habits. We drive to work on the same route. Maybe we stop for the same coffee uh, shop in the morning or the same breakfast. And we find ourselves driving down the road on the weekends and taking our same eggs that we normally do during the week. It's this unconscious um, kind of habits we've created for ourselves. Well, the same works with our spending. Um, environment is another big one. Let's think about advertisements. We're bombarded all day with advertisements for, you know, on the newspaper, the radio. Actually, let's just do this in the chat. Go ahead and type in the last th advertisement you saw that made you want to buy something. Peloton, that one's great. Yeah, advertisers do such a good job. They use celebrities and, and they bring them. And with taking our kids off at school and the, the, all, their, all their friends have the, the newest clothes and the shoes and an iPhone. And we feel like we have to keep up. We keep up with the Joneses and, and compete on that level. But we just have to step back and remember, maybe this isn't our financial goal. Maybe these aren't our values. And we have to step back and understand what works for us and have a plan around that. And the last thing I want to talk about is going back to these emotions. And I'll share a quick story. I was uh, talking to a friend of mine and she goes shopping every week at Target for her, uh, her household needs. And she takes her toddler with her. And she's like, oh, I spend more money than I ever planned every time I go. And I said, well, what are you buying? And she's like, well, you know, every time I go, I buy my toddler a gift because the toddler looks up, her child looks up with her, these, these big eyes. And, you know, she wants to get her child a gift and there's nothing wrong with that. But what she's done, we're tying this back into those habits. And now every time they go to Target every week, the child knows how to manipulate that situation and get the toy every time. And now she's dealing with both the emotions and the habits that she's created. So how do we manage that? And the first thing we do, if you meet with Carolyn or myself, we are the uh, financial coaches at California Coast. One of the first things we're going to do is we're going to help you create a weekly or monthly plan, depending on your income. And by following that plan, it takes a lot of the emotional work out of it because we already have our, our roadmap laid out for us. A couple of the tips I found, and you can feel free to write this down in your notes, is giving yourself a waiting period. This is always a smart thing. I, I uh, talked to a member, and this is a brilliant idea she had. On her computer, she has a sticky note, and it says, where will this item be in one year? And it's just a great thought of, am I, do I really need this? Or am I buying it because it's emotional? Or in one year from now, is this going to better my life? Uh, limiting your use of credit cards until the debt is paid off. I love this strategy. It, it tells you that, okay, if I want to buy an item, if I want to use my credit card, I have to first pay off my credit card before I put a new purchase on it. And the last thing, it's, it's a little bit of a challenge, but another strategy is removing your account information from your devices. Um, it makes you, because we all have our account information stored you know, on our phone and things are just so easy to buy, but if we remove that, it makes us do the extra step and makes that much more difficult not to buy things on an emotional bit. And when it really comes down to all this, it's your needs versus your wants. So I have this slide. I love this. Uh, one of my members actually cut this out, shrank it down, put it in her wallet and wrapped it around her debit card. And she physically has to unwrap this around her debit card before she makes a purchase and ask herself these questions. Do I need this? Is it helping me reach my goals? My, my favorite, actually, the last two. What is the worst thing that would happen if I don't have this? And is there another way? And I'm going to ask you to participate again. And is there another way? Let me give you this quick story. So I was working with members, and their goal was to pay off 
they're high interest credit card debt. So fantastic goal. And I said, wait, how, okay, how are we going to go ahead and do this? And they said, what we're going to do is we're going to slowly make the payments on it. But our the strategy, the key is we're not going to add any more purchases. We're not going to use that credit card anymore. So great. So I met with them a month later and there was a purchase for a $300 chainsaw on their credit card. And we talked about this and we said, okay, what was that situation? What what made you decide to do that? And again, what was the worst thing was going to happen? And they said, well, you know, we have a tree that's leaning over our neighbor's house and we had to take care of it. And absolutely, if those things come up, you have to take care of those issues. But was there another way? So what might you have told that, that person who we talked to and they had another you know, $300 credit card? Was there another way to take care of that tree issue? What do you recommend? Borrow a chainsaw, borrow one. I love it. Everybody said borrow. You know, you can go to your local hardware store and maybe rent the chainsaw. Or maybe if it's a one-time project, hire a professional. Ask the neighbors to share the cost. I love these. You guys are, are, I love the way you're thinking. Now, here's the next challenge. I want you to take that same thinking and think about every uh, monthly item you have. We have groceries, we have utilities, insurance, credit payments. These are every month we have these expenses and here's where i'd like you to start taking the notes write this down maybe give yourself a little to-do list after you might hear a couple new ideas um, and really hopefully we can add a little bit of uh, value to this webinar for you today the first one i want to talk about is groceries and this is actually my favorite and the reason it is is because this is something near and dear to me my wife and i have worked on this and we've actually i'd like to say almost perfected this over the last year and what we've done is we go shopping one day a week. We start on Tuesdays. What we do is we clean out our fridge and we check out what we have. And then we make the meal plan based on what we have in the house and what we still need to buy. And it does something because if we only shop on that one day a week, it means we're not out shopping two, three times a week and buying extra things we might not need. It also gives us that peace of mind that we're not coming to the end of the day, we're tired from work and we need to come home and I don't know, what do you wanna eat? I'm not sure, what do you wanna eat? Let's just go out and get something. We already have it on the list and we stick to our plan. A couple of things we do, we only pay with cash or debit cards, so things don't go on the credit cards. I'm always looking for coupons or buying store brands. So hopefully you can write down a couple of those things and use them. Insurance is another big one. So. This is important to understand your coverage. There's something called a declarations page, and that's basically your summary of all of your coverage costs. And what's important to do from time to time is to make sure you understand it, but make sure, are you overpaying for things? Are you paying for things you don't need? And you know, understand your deductibles, know what those are in case you have to use your insurance. Do you have that money set aside in your emergency plan? And the call and ask for discounts. There's always student senior discounts, and sometimes there are even income-based discounts. And I'll share this another story with you. So I have a home alarm system at my house. And I called and I said, hey, you know, I've, do you have any kind of loyalty discounts? And they said, yeah, we have a loyalty discount at 10 years. And I can see you've been with us for eight years and going on nine years. We're going to go ahead and just extend that to you now. And that was such a great thing. It didn't cost them a lot of money, but it sure cemented that relationship. So always don't be afraid to call and ask and make sure you understand all of your utility bills, all your bills. Let's go back to the utilities now. Know your usage. And this is gonna be one other story I'm gonna share with you. Uh, I'll use water for example. Uh, so my household uses about 3000 gallons of water a month. And one's like, why is that important? Well, one a couple months back, I got my utility bill. And it only went up five or ten dollars, so I wouldn't really notice a difference. But by knowing your usage, I took a quick, a, a deeper look, and it said I used six thousand gallons that month. And I said that seems a little high. I mean, I, I suppose it's possible. It was five or ten dollars more, and I didn't think too much of it. But I did keep it in the back of my mind. The next month, I got the bill, and I used eleven thousand gallons. And again, my bill didn't go up another five or ten dollars. Can wouldn't have noticed unless I knew my usage, and by seeing that pattern for 3,000 to 6,000, now 11,000 gallons, I knew there was a problem. And it turned out there was a leak under the driveway. 
and something I probably wouldn't have found for months. And the, the company fixing it said, yes, we see this all the time that they have these small leaks and they go undetected until it becomes a big problem. So knowing your usage is a safety issue as well as, as a financial issue. Know about income-based discounts. I know SDGE, for example, um, has several income-based discounts as well as occupancy-based discounts. Uh, so make sure you look into that. They also provide a home inspection. Maybe it'll take a look at your weather stripping or uh, maybe they have energy efficient light bulbs. A couple other strategies you can take a look at is level pay. So what level pay is, let's say I use a lot more gas during the winter and a lot more electricity during the summer on air conditioning. So rather than having those high bills uh, every winter and every summer, what they can do is they can average out what I might expect to pay and average that over the same 12 months and I'm paying a very similar bill. I got this tip from um, Carolyn, she's our other coach, and this is a genius tip. Uh, if, many of us use power strips for you know, computers, for TVs, but they're still sucking electricity when we're not using them. So when you plug in the power strips, make sure you're, you're turning off your power strip um, but when you leave the room or, you know, you're no longer using that appliance and it's amazing how much power it saves. The last thing I want to talk to you today about is the creditor payments. Now we all have creditor payments we have to, you know, deal with every month. But one thing I want you to take a look at is levering their assets. And let me give you an example of what that means. Many people know that you can borrow the equity in your home but not as many people know that you can actually borrow the equity in your car. So maybe a car interest rate is much lower than a credit card interest rate. So if you're carrying a balance on your credit card, the higher interest rate, maybe you can use the equity you have in your car. So I'd like you all to do something. If you're writing this down after this meeting, go to kellybluebook.com and search for the value of your vehicle. It's always good to know what assets you have and what you can draw from in, in an emergency situation or just to go ahead and pay less in interest. There's always consolidation and balance transfer options. Be happy to help you out with that. Maybe you are paying higher interest on one credit card or one loan, and maybe there's a better credit card or loan out there for you. And the last thing I wanna make sure is if you're in a situation where you have a financial hardship right now, your creditors, your lenders, your banks and credit unions, they don't want you to default on the loan. They don't want you to have late payments and they want to work with you. So please, uh, if you're finding yourself in that situation, reach out, reach out to the bank, reach out to the credit union and ask them, what kind of options do I have? And more times than not, they'll try to find a, the, do the best to find a plan uh, to work with you. So I think we've talked about quite a lot. Uh, we have a lot of tools for the new year. Uh, I would encourage you absolutely be mindful of this emotional spending. Uh, know your goals, stay the course, and have a plan that includes all of your expenses. We have another tool uh, for members with California Coast. If you go to californiacoast.com, uh, sorry, californiacoastcu.org slash enrich. Enrich is, provides courses and videos and articles to learn more about financial wellness. Uh, it's a great resource. I'd encourage you to check it out. And if you ever need one-on-one -on -one coaching, maybe you need a little bit more personal assistance, uh, myself and Terilyn are always available. We'll give, provide you our phone numbers, our e direct email addresses. I know Josh is going to um, make this presentation available at the end, but please reach out to us if you have any questions. And at this time, Josh, or do we have time to open this up for uh, personal questions? Uh, if anyone does have a question for Jevin, you can go ahead and uh, type it into the chat or the question and answer box. Uh, but in the meantime, I do want to mention that uh, uh, same thing that Jevin was talking about. We do we have we do have the Enrich platform, and I put the uh, link in the chat for you to check that out. Uh, we also have quite a, a few um, uh, recorded webinars on our YouTube channel, so. I'll put the link in there for you as well. That goes to our channel. So today's presentation will be on there in the next couple of days. And we do have many of our other webinars that we've done in the past uh, waiting there for you. It's all completely free, including the Enrich portal, YouTube, all that completely free. We never charge for any of it. And um, you can go check it out anytime. 
And there's all kinds of resources there, not just on spending or, or budgeting. There's, you know, uh, credit scores and yeah, dealing with debt and, and investing and retirement. There's all kinds of uh, content on there about different topics. So we encourage you to check all of that out. Uh, I see Tara Lynn, who is also uh, our manager of our financial fitness coaching uh, program. She's in the chat answering questions already. So she's on top of it for you, Jevin. Uh, <laughs> But uh, let's see. Um, I do have one question here. I, I have a mint. I have Mint Mobile. Uh, you repay, or I'm sorry, you prepay in bulk. I usually do three months at forty dollars a month, but it's ten dollars cheaper per month if I buy a year in advance. Is it worth it? Do you? Um, does that make sorry, sense? Sorry, Josh. Can you go back and just repeat that one more time? Yeah. Um, so it says I have Mint Mobile. Uh, you prepay in bulk. I'm not quite sure what that. What, um, it's Michael asking this question, Michael, I don't know if prepay in bulk, I'm not quite sure what that's, uh, in, re in reference to, but it says usually do three months at $40 a month, but it's $10 cheaper per month. If I buy a year in advance, is it worth it? Okay. Well, I have a very short, <laughs> a short answer to that. And absolutely. You know what, if we can get Michael's, um, email address, we'll go ahead and, uh, contact him personally, but a very quick answer to that is if he is carrying any kind of credit card debt or high interest debt where it could be cheaper to pay that off first. Um, I'd like to see that done first rather than he buys in bulk, but it could absolutely be based on his particular situation. So uh, why don't we see if we can grab his email address and answer that personally. That's great. So Michael, please feel free to uh, either uh, send us your info in the chat your, or your email address or um, you can contact Jevin or Tara Lynn directly if you like as well. Uh, do we contact Jevin or Tara Lynn for questions on how to consolidate our credit cards into our CalCoast credit cards or the general customer service number? Do we contact you or should they reach out to, oh, it looks like Tara Lynn just answered. You can reach out to the financial fitness team for that. Uh, so yeah, you can contact Tara Lynn and Jevin. They'll help you out with that. <laughs> Carolyn, you're too quick. <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> uh, let's see. All right. Any other questions out there? I think while we wait to see if anyone else has a question, I also want to mention that if you are not a member as of yet, we do have uh, promotions available. If you become a member, we actually pay you. Uh, we also have a referral program. So if you have any friends or family that aren't members as of yet, you can always refer them and you both will get paid to become members. So if you're interested in that, you can contact us as well. Uh, let's see. Any other questions about anything uh, Calcos related? Today's uh, content or anything at all. All right. Well, again, if you do have any questions, please feel free to contact us anytime. You can uh, contact Jevin and Tara Lynn directly, or there's so many ways to get a hold of us. Uh, call, come in. Although right now, uh, with uh, you know the the surge in COVID, maybe it's best if you can go online or call us first before coming into the branch. If you're comfortable with that, we appreciate it. Uh, also, you can contact contact us through social media. We're very responsive there too. So, uh, with that, I just want to thank Jevin for all the great tips and tricks uh, and all the great content today. And Tara Lynn, thank you behind the scenes answering the questions. And uh, we'll see you next month. Uh, keep an eye out for the email to come out to. Uh, or to register for the session next month. We'll be, we'll be doing monthly webinars this year and we have some great new topics we'll be focusing on. So uh, keep an eye out for next month's email. And until then, we will see you next time. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone.